Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. You're talking about the power of God in our lives this week, Colin, and how that is evidenced. And you explained yesterday that the first thing we notice when we have the power of God in our lives is that we have this ability to love. First, a love for God, and then a love for people. Yes, I think most people associate power just with the working of miracles and healings and so on. But of course, the power of God is to be evidenced in our lives in many more ways than just to love God. Uh, to to heal and to perform miracles. We'll come on to that aspect of the power of God later in the week. But we've seen that if a person's life is filled with the Spirit, then first and foremost you will see this supernatural power of God operating within them to enable them to love whoever God puts in front of them. And that does include uh, the ability to love people that in the natural you would not have the ability to love. You would not even have the desire to love them, the willingness to love them. And this supernatural love of God transcends anything and everything else in our lives. So it's very, very important for us to realize that whatever God has called us to do, then he has empowered us supernaturally by his Spirit. And the emphasis there is on empowered us. So because we are to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, he empowers us with his love to do that. Because we are to love our neighbor as ourselves, he empowers us with his love to do that. Because we are to love one another as he has loved us, then he empowers us to do that. There is nothing that he asks of us without empowering us to do it. Now today I want to add to this power to love, um, he gives us the power to rejoice. Now, the scripture is very clear that we are to rejoice always. And we read in the first chapter of Hebrews that it was the anointing of the oil of joy that was upon Jesus that raised him above his companions. In other words, Jesus was the most joyful person that has ever walked on the face of the earth. I, I, you know I'm an, uh, an artist by, um, uh, that's my, uh, my hobby when I get time to do it, um, but I have great problems that in the history of, the art, uh, of art, Jesus has been made to appear such a serious, almost forlorn figure, whereas in fact he was the man of joy. And it's good that in a lot of modern art, the joy of the Lord uh, is expressed in, in paintings that, that depict Jesus. Now, we are to be a joyful people. If we are to be rejoicing always and giving thanks in all circumstances, we are to be a joyful people. Now, what has this got to do with the power of God. Well, we've seen that the power is the power of the Holy Spirit within us. We talked yesterday, and I've just mentioned a little more, about the love of God. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Just as the Spirit empowers us to love, so he empowers us to rejoice. If it's the will of God that we should rejoice in all circumstances, the power of the Holy Spirit will enable us to do that. Now, just as we can love those who we would not naturally uh, feel inclined to love or even believe we had the ability to love, but supernaturally he releases his love within us to enable us to love those people, so it is true with the joy. Whereas there are many situations in which we're placed which are very testing, troublesome, difficult, and in the natural we would not choose to rejoice, we would not really be thankful. Uh, in fact, if we just trusted to our flesh, to our natural instincts, we could feel bitter and angry and disappointed that we even have to experience such things. 
But you see, we don't trust to the flesh. If we're Christians, we walk in the Spirit. And that means we live in the power of God. And we live in this power that enables us to rejoice at all times and to give thanks in all circumstances. Now, why should God put such a power within us? Well, we could say uh, to enable us to fulfill his command, because it is a command to rejoice always. But of course, God has purpose in all of his commands. And he knows that even when we're in trying and testing circumstances, it's very easy for us to get so taken up with the problems and with our feelings and reactions towards those problems, our natural reactions towards those problems, that we could easily be distracted from the Lord and therefore stop really walking by faith and trust in him in the middle of those trying and testing circumstances. But if we trust to the Holy Spirit within us, who can empower us to rejoice in the Lord always and to give thanks in all circumstances, then that gets our focus off of ourselves and the problems and the immediate situation and onto God who is greater than the situation and the one who is able to change the situation. So this ability to rejoice in the Lord, this ability to give thanks in all circumstances, enables us to walk by faith. And, and we need the power of God to enable that walk by faith, because we know that without faith it is impossible to, to please God. And the, the mistake that so many Christians make is they only rejoice in the Lord when they feel like it. They only give thanks when something really good has happened. But, you see, the scripture says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Be joyful always. Give thanks in all circumstances. And we have this promise, you see, that in all circumstances, God will work for our good because we, be, because we love him and have been called according to his purpose. So, while you resent the circumstances, you'll find that the power of God does not operate in those circumstances to change what is happening. But once you start rejoicing in the Lord, once you start giving thanks right in the middle of that, thanking him for his mercy, thanking him for his grace, thanking him that he has the power to change those circumstances, that releases the life and it releases the power of God into those circumstances. So you're not thanking God for the problem and the circumstances, you're thanking him that he is above them. You're thanking him right in the middle of sometimes what is mess and muddle and confusion because no matter what is happening to you, God is the same. He hasn't changed. His love is still the same for you. His power is there available to you. And so that, that rejoicing in him, that ability to praise God, that ability to give thanks right in the middle of that situation releases the power of God into those circumstances. As soon as you start to rejoice, to praise God, to give thanks, God works within that situation to change what is happening. While you resent your circumstances, while you're angry and bitter, uh, you probably aren't even praying, let alone walking by faith, the kind of faith that will release the power of God. And uh, unfortunately, there's a, a lot of Christians who don't really uh, understand the relationship between this joy and this ability to praise God and to be thankful and the release of power in their lives. If only they spent time every day rejoicing in God, giving him thanks, praising him, they would see much, much more of the power of God in their lives. And, you know, I, I, there are a lot of Christians who, who um, have a time of prayer every day but how important it is for us to spend time praising God every day 
rejoicing in God every day, not just praying for him to do what we need, because when we rejoice in him and praise him, then that releases the power into our circumstances. So take your eyes off the problem, in other words. Refix your focus. It gives, yes, if you get your eyes on the Lord and rejoice in him, that gives you an entirely different perception of the problem and the situation you're in. I always liken it to this. If you stand at the foot of a mountain and you look at it, it seems such a great immovable object. But if you get up in a plane and you look down on the same mountain, it's smaller than, than the nail of your little finger. And if you could sort of reach out of the plane window, you could just sort of flick it to one side with one of your finger. It seems so small uh, by comparison. It's the same mountain. It hasn't diminished in size. It's just that you have got an entirely different perception and perspective on that mountain. And that's what praising God and rejoicing in him and giving thanks does for us. It gives us an entirely different perception. That releases faith, and the power of God is released into the situation. And I can only suggest this to all those that are listening. If you've never done this and you're in the middle of a really testing time now, take time out, rejoice in God, not, not just about the situation, just rejoice in him, praise him, start giving thanks to him that he is with you, that he is faithful, that he will lead you through that time, that he is greater than the problem. And you will see not only will your perception of the situation change, but the power of God will also be released into that situation. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 